guys, welcome to today's video. My name is Blanca and if you're new here, I do some furniture upcycling and thrift flips, uh, home decor, we are decorating our house on a budget, so I do a lot of that. But today is a really exciting video because I found this awesome desk at a state sale. It had a lot of damage, but I was determined to save it. And so if you wanna see how I turned this awesome desk into this even more awesome nightstands, stay tuned. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we have to do a lot of repairs. So I'm going to divide this video into two parts. One is going to be the repairs and fixing prep work. The next part of the video, which will be the painting, will be up on my channel next week. So if you guys aren't following me on social media or if you're not subscribed, now will be a good time to do it so that you don't miss the big reveal, although I already show you the pictures. But anyway, let's get to it. This bad boy has a lot of things to fix. It may not look like it, but it does, let me show you. You can't really see it at first glance, but all of the legs look like this. They are separating, they are cracked, they are damaged. One of them is missing and a third of it is actually missing. Uh, the veneer is chipped all over, so it's gonna be really hard to save as it is. Okay guys, so one of the beauties about this desk is that it actually has four legs on each side. So my plan is to take them apart and turn them into nightstands. Granted, they are a little tall, but I think I can trim them right here or maybe at the bottom and make them shorter. Uh, but yeah, it's really rare that you find them with four legs on the back. Usually they'll have the end on the outside and those won't be part of the design because they're, I guess, technically not needed. But that's really good for me. Okay, now that we have a plan, let's figure out how this thing is put together so that we can take it apart. So it looks like they are attached with this bracket. Let me see if I can zoom in. Once I got the sides out, I realized that it was also held together by the top and it was screwed in with some wooden dowels. So I needed to lift the top and hope that I could get to the inside, the middle of the desk, and I could figure out how that part was attached. To do that, I grabbed a little block of wood, put it underneath the lip of the top of the desk and started hammering up to loosen it. The reason why I put the block of wood in there is because I did not want to damage it and leave hammer marks onto the wood. Even though it's on the underneath side, it's always a good practice to use a block of wood or something else so that you won't leave hammer prints. I went around the entire perimeter a couple times just to make sure everything was loosening um, evenly. And then you can actually see here how it's attached with the dowels and then the dried out glue. So once I had it all loose, I could actually lift the entire desktop. top was off I realized that the middle part of the desk was actually built into the side so it was a mortise and tenon joinery and so the desk was kind of sandwiched into the sides like this the only way around it really was to cut it out and try to smooth it as much as I could someone help me to do that, I'm going to use the Zazal, and I actually asked Corey about a million times what the best way to go about this was, just because I was hoping he would give me a different answer, but the answer was always the Zazal. For some reason, I am terrified of this tool, but after using it a couple times, it's not as scary as it looks.
So after that, I have to cut the sides from the actual nightstands. And to do that, I went to another tool that I really didn't want to use, but this is the multi-tool. And it's essentially a saw that allows you to cut straight. And that's what I'm doing. I'm removing that piece that connected the entire thing together. And it was very tedious and time consuming. There were a couple of nails there that I couldn't get. So I don't know if you can see me right here in the corner. I am using a little saw, metal saw, to cut that nail so that I can keep using the multi-tool. This is what it looked like once I removed those connecting pieces. So to patch the entire thing, I'm going to use Bundo. And usually we buy a big tub because we use it a lot. It hardens fairly quickly. You can sand it. And once you sand, you, uh, you cannot tell that it's been patched. If you're not familiar with it, you put some of the paste out and then you apply a little bit of the hardener. You want to work with small batches because it hardens fairly quickly. So I'll mix a little bit until it's completely mixed and it'll change colors. And then I'll apply it to a small section and mix some more as I need. Okay, now that the bundle has dried, we are going to go ahead and sand all the parts that we've missed. Um, I had missed a couple of pieces of veneer because I thought I was going to save them. But once I started to bundle, I realized that I didn't want to save them. So I went ahead and scraped those off as well. And then finished by sanding off all the bundle and sanding everything smooth. leg that was broken off that I showed you at the beginning well I had glued the back and there was a third of the leg missing so you know number one I was worried about stability and number two I can't ignore that it's a big chunk so guess what we're going to have to do reconstructive surgery <laughs> Okay, the next step will be to cut the size of the desk to get rid of that middle part. We're going to use a circular saw for that and I'm going to have to ask Cory to help me because I am terrified of that thing. It's kind of heavy and bulky so it scares me to death, but we're going to get that done. I started by removing the little hardware that was on top that allowed it to fold over and then I got Cory to come and help me set up so we measured twice. <laughs> We don't want to cut this wrong because we only have one piece. So we measured it and then he showed me how to like set up everything, how to use a straight edge to get a straight line since it's a freehand circular saw and then he had me measure everything and try and do it myself. But it was super heavy so he ended up helping me kind of hold it or just watching me while I did it. Just to make sure I didn't cut my fingers off. Okay, now that those pieces are cut, I ended up sanding the edges to round them to match the other corner. I traced it by overlapping one on top of the other so that the rounded corner would, co would coincide with the square corner and just traced it and then sanded it off, cut that excess corner off and then sanded it off. And then once it was smooth, it was time to glue, but then I realized that it was extremely bowed another obstacle uh, but in order to fix that part we're going to screw it from the top i'm going to have to bundle those again and sand them to cover those screw holes but i think that's probably the best thing that i can do and i had forgotten to prep this part but essentially i went around the whole thing and scraped off any excess uh, dry glue any debris any pieces of wood and sanded it off i did the same thing to the top to the underneath part so that it would lay flat and then I filled in the dowel holes with glue and I placed it where it needed to be I also put some glue on the edges of the nightstand and then I grabbed a flat piece of wood that would go the length of the nightstand so that it would help me to keep it straight from the middle section since I couldn't clamp there Y'all, don't mind my different wardrobe changes. Uh, I somehow lost the clip for the other day, so I'm picking up where I left off on the second nightstand. I hope that y'all know anyway that this wasn't done in one day. Um, so it was quite a bit of work, so I had to space it out whenever I had time. What I'm doing here is that I'm pre-drilling the holes so that it does the wood doesn't crack on me whenever I put the screws in. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab a countersink bit and countersink those even more so that the head of the screw can go flat into that surface. And then when I bundle and patch it, you can't see them. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now let's move on to carving that leg. So we put this big blob of bundo, and what we're going to do is that we're going to use a Dremel to carve it. I thought about a couple different ways to do it, but I decided to ultimately go with bundo. It wasn't going to turn out perfect, but I think it was gonna be good enough, and since I intended to keep this to myself, I really wasn't looking for perfection. I was looking for stability and close enough. measured my current nightstands and I know that they are 24 inches tall so I think this are going to be on the tall side I think six inches taller because I want to come up to here and cut it so that will be 30 inches which uh, I don't know guys I think that might be too tall but we'll see we'll test it out I'm gonna start there and then we can always take more out if we need to so let's do that. Wish me luck because I'm going to use the terrifying sawzall. <laughs> wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. <laughs> okay guys, that is it for part one of this video, which is what we're doing right now. Your nightstands or your project should look something like this, all prepped, smooth, ready to go. If you want to see how I painted it, what colors I chose, um, and all the finishing touches in this part, don't forget to tune in next week. I will upload the second half of this video. And you can also check out our social media and subscribe so that you don't miss that part. See you guys next week. Bye! I'm going to glue it and screw it, so... <laughs>